Hello VMUG attendees. Welcome to today's session on how to add a protective layer around your VMware infrastructure by utilizing a combination of Entrust, formerly Hytrust products, to accomplish this task and why. My name is Dave Stevens, and I'm a Senior Technical Solutions Consultant at Entrust in the Data Protection Solutions Group, mainly for Hytrust products. It's been a while since I've spoken to a VMUG audience, and I'm super excited to be back presenting to all of you. Since this is a recorded session, I want to provide several ways for any of you watching the session to reach out to me for additional information after the event. I'm usually lurking on Twitter, so send me a DM if you are a Twitter user. Additionally, you can email me at the address on the screen. For those of you who are familiar with Hytrust already, you may have noticed that I mentioned Entrust, formerly Hytrust products. As you can see from this slide, Hytrust was acquired by Entrust. This happened back in January of 2021. Those familiar with Hytrust and our products have nothing to fear. The Hytrust product line is sticking around for the long term. In fact, the Hytrust products will be enhanced and take on more prominent roles alongside the Entrust product lines. Over the next few months, the Hytrust products will be rebranded, which means you will see a facelift of the user interfaces and some exciting new features. Today's agenda is jam-packed and includes the following items. First, I'll quickly cover encryption and key management for vSphere VM encryption, as well as vSAN data store encryption. For those of you already familiar with Hytrust products, I'm talking about key control and data control. For those of you who are new around here, stay tuned. Next, I'll talk about one of our lesser known products, Cloud Control. I'll discuss how to assess your environment to find gaps and compliance deficiencies, and more importantly, how to automatically remediate your environment and put it back into compliance. Once you have your vSphere environment compliant, you probably want to keep it that way. By utilizing Cloud Control's rule-based access controls, you can implement least privileged access and take advantage of a feature known as view hiding. Sticking with the security compliance theme, Cloud Control has a feature that enables you to limit who can perform sensitive operations, such as deleting a VM or powering off a VM at the most inopportune time. I'll dig into each of these items further as I move through the deck. When it comes to adding a protective layer to your vSphere environment, data at rest encryption is a great first step. Back in the vSphere 6.5 days, VMware added encryption to the product line. However, in order to enable it, you need a key manager or KMS. This is where Key Control can help. Key Control is a VMware certified scalable key manager that implements the Key Management Interoperability Protocol, or KMIP for short. Key Control simplifies the management of encrypted virtual workloads by automating and simplifying the life cycle of encryption keys, including key storage, distribution, rotation, and key revocation. Key Control can also be integrated with a FIPS 140-2 compliant hardware security module, or HSM, such as the Entrust Enshield HSM. Key Control can also be used for managing encryption keys for other KMIP compliant products, such as storage devices and databases. So don't think of it as a one-trick pony. Speaking of storage devices, did you know Key Control can even help eliminate the need to spend extra budget on costly self-encrypting hard drives? By utilizing Key Control, you can meet compliance and security standards such as PCI DSS, HIPAA, NIST 800-53, and GDPR with one tool. It has an easy to use graphical interface and can be deployed in under an hour, even if you've never seen the product. If you're into IT automation, then you are in luck because Key Control is completely REST API based. So this means you can take advantage of PowerShell or Python to automate the use of Key Control. If you want to learn a bit more about Key Manager basics as they relate to VMware, I have a slide that lists some great resources later on in the deck. Now that I've covered why you need a Key Manager for enabling encryption in your vSphere environment, I want to switch over and look at an architectural view of how vSphere VM encryption works. As this slide shows, there are three essential components. The key control cluster in the upper left-hand corner with its encrypted object store, where all the encryption keys are protected and stored, virtual center in the middle, and at least one ESX host. To get started, you'll deploy a four node key control cluster. Once you've done that, you'll add your key control cluster as a key management server to your version 6.5 or 6.7 virtual center. And if you're running virtual center 7.0, then you will add the cluster as a key provider in virtual center. It's not exactly clear why, but in vSphere 7, VMware changed the terminology. 
just be assured that the same basic process is the same for connecting Key Control and Virtual Center together. Once you have completed this step, then you're ready to begin encrypting virtual machines. Right click a VM, select VM policies, then click edit virtual machine policies and decide if you want to encrypt the entire VM or just individual virtual hard disks. Click OK and you're off to the races. Make sure you have the VM powered off. This is a VMware requirement, not a key manager requirement. So if powering off the virtual machine isn't an option, then Entrust Data Control can help you here. More on this in a few more slides. So basically the process is Virtual Center requests a key encryption key or a KEK from the key control server. It passes the KEK ID to the ESX host where the VM is assigned. From here, it will derive a data encryption key from the KEK ID and begin encrypting the VM. Now let's look at how vSAN encryption works. It's a little bit different from vSphere encryption because you're not encrypting individual virtual machines. You're encrypting the entire vSAN data store. So what this means is that any VM that is stored on this data store is automatically encrypted. You still need the key control cluster to be added to vCenter, and you obviously need a functional vSAN cluster. After you enable vSAN encryption, each host will ask vCenter to request a key encryption key or KEK from key control. It will pass the KEK ID to each ESX host in the vSAN cluster. Each ESX host will then derive a data encryption key from the KEK ID for each disk in the host, and begin encrypting the disks one at a time. Before encrypting a disk, the host will evacuate all data off the hard drive, encrypt it, move data back onto it, and rinse and repeat until all disks in all of the hosts have been encrypted. Now one unique characteristic of a vSAN host is that after initial encryption has completed, the vSAN host can communicate directly with the key control cluster to obtain the KEK ID for future encryption key requests. In addition to encrypting a VM or a vSAN data store, Key Control can also be used for taking advantage of a Virtual Trusted Platform Module or a VTPM. What is a Virtual Trusted Platform Module, you ask? Well, quoting from VMware, a Virtual Trusted Platform Module or VTPM is a software based representation of a physical Trusted Platform 2.0 chip in a host. A VTPM provides hardware based security related functions such as random number generation, attestation, key generation, and more. When adding to a virtual machine, a VTPM enables the guest operating system to create and store keys that are private, just to that virtual machine. These keys are not exposed to the guest operating system itself. Therefore, the virtual machine attack surface is reduced. Usually, compromising the guest operating system compromises its secrets, but enabling a VTPM greatly reduces this risk. These keys can be used only by the guest operating system for encryption or signing. And with an attached VTPM, a third party can remotely attest to or validate the identity of the firmware and the guest operating system. Now, if your head is spinning from what I just stated to you, then I encourage you to do a quick Google search on what is a VTPM and other uses that it can help with. Just know that if someone in your organization wants to use a VTPM for any VMs, Key Control can help. What if you also have VMs running in a public cloud, such as AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Platform, or some other cloud provider? This is where Entrust Data Control comes in. Data Control is an in-guest policy agent that ties a security policy to a VM and encrypts or decrypts a VM. Data Control ensures that your data is always protected no matter where the VM runs. It utilizes the key management capabilities of Key Control. Is FIPS 142 certified? It can also take advantage of an HSM for a hardware root of trust, such as an Entrust EndShield HSM. As I alluded to in a previous slide, the Data Control Policy Engine can encrypt or decrypt a VM without needing to power it off. So, if you have an application or VM that must be running at all times, then Data Control is for you. Additionally, the rate of encryption can be throttled via the Policy Agent, and all encryption operations are offloaded to the underlying ESX host's AES-NI chipset. This way, your VM CPU isn't pegged while encryption is being performed. Before I move off the topic of virtual machine encryption, I want to briefly cover the deployment architecture for key control and data control. This slide depicts a typical primary and secondary data center with the option of VMs running in a public cloud. At a minimum, key control is sold as a four node cluster and maxes out at eight nodes. But for most customers, four nodes is sufficient. So what you would do is deploy the two nodes in the primary data center, two nodes in a secondary data center, 
and then once the cluster has been connected to Virtual Center, you would begin encrypting VMs. If you are also running VMs outside of your on-premises data centers, such as in a public cloud, then you would install the Data Control Policy Agent on those VMs, register them with Key Control, and enable encryption. To make sure the policy agent can communicate with the Key Control cluster from the public cloud, consult the online documentation. If you have any questions about this deployment scenario, please reach out to me or ask in the chat window. On this slide, you'll find some great key control and data control resources. The top URL is an area where you can go to download and register for a key control 30-day trial. During that trial, if you get stuck or you want to understand how to deploy key control or data control, the key control and data control both have video demo series up on the HITRUST YouTube site. Consult them and understand how to deploy both products. If you don't have a lab, then I encourage you to take advantage of the VMware hands-on labs. The VMware vSphere Security Getting Started Lab is a great lab for you to understand how key management works in vSphere, and it also specializes in our key control product in the lab. And then lastly, if you want more detail, consult this VMware encryption blog. Encryption is a great way to add a security layer to your vSphere environment, but it's not the only layer to consider. I'm going to switch gears away from encryption and key management and go over cloud control and how it can help you further secure your vSphere environment. Auditing and compliance are the bane of many CISOs and IT organizations globally. To date, some tools help cite deficiencies but do not extend the automation of putting an environment back into a state of continuous compliance. Cloud control configuration hardening and compliance provides a rapid payback by ensuring that systems are always compliant thereby allowing an organization to deploy staff to work on higher value tasks instead of regularly ensuring the environment meets regulatory or internal security audit requirements. The ease with which an administrator can migrate a virtual machine and make changes to the underlying infrastructure makes it challenging to maintain security and compliance for a VMware environment. The complexity of virtual environments also doesn't help. This is why it makes sense to automate security compliance and remediation. Cloud Control's configuration and compliance capabilities support customers by consistently enforcing security controls through a four-phased approach. The first step is to define the security compliance standard, which best meets your organization's needs. This can be accomplished using built-in templates for various regulatory and government standards, such as PCI DSS, HIPAA, NIST, and 853. Additionally, industry best practice guides, such as the VMware Hardening Guide, are also included. Once you have defined the standard and created a configuration template, you can manually and or on a scheduled basis assess the VMware infrastructure and receive a report to determine the level of compliance. Assessing the environment is only half the task of meeting your compliance goals. Entrust Cloud Control can also perform automated or manual remediation to bring the virtual environment automatically back into compliance. VMware virtual environments are somewhat like growing children. They are constantly changing, and so are security best practices. Well, luckily, Cloud Control security configuration templates are updated regularly to reflect the latest industry standards. So the built-in templates can be updated out of band with a regular product release cycle, thereby allowing you to continually refine your security standards to reflect changes in your security posture. Two core tenets of security are the principle of least privilege and separation of duties. Cloud Control accomplishes both of these through the use of rule-based access controls and secondary approval workflows. Secondary approval workflows allow organizations to have greater control over the use of powerful administrator privileges by forcing virtual administrators to acquire an additional level of approval to complete a sensitive operation that could be detrimental to the virtual infrastructure if performed on the wrong day or time. An example would be powering off a critical VM during business hours. Role-based access control and secondary approval workflows also enable an organization to better understand and monitor admin privileges, thus helping them to determine current risk profiles and adjust permissions accordingly. Hopefully you see that the additional security layers provided by Cloud Control enhance existing network-based security for your VMware infrastructure. By now, you're probably trying to understand how does HITRUST Cloud Control work in my environment? Well, on this slide, this is the typical vSphere architecture without high trust cloud control. Typically, you have administrators accessing virtual center, or you've got orchestration tools such as vRealize performing operations within your environment. The issue with this is the rule-based access controls live within virtual center, and 
This means that there's a potential for an insider threat, if you want to think of it that way, that a virtual center admin could grant themselves more privileges than they're really needed to get their jobs done. One of the other issues with this is that only actions that are performed are logged and easily accessible inside Virtual Center. Once Cloud Control is introduced into the architecture, it operates as a transparent proxy that seamlessly intercepts, monitors, enforces, and logs all privileged user requests originating from various access mechanisms I mentioned before. You deploy the Cloud Control transparent proxy in a highly available active passive pair of virtual appliances. If the primary appliance fails, the secondary appliance takes over. When an administrator attempts to perform a sensitive operation, such as deleting a virtual machine, the operation is assessed by the Cloud Control Policy Engine and determines, based on the role the user has been assigned, whether or not they can perform that operation. If they are permitted to delete the virtual machine, then Cloud Control forwards the operation to Virtual Center logs all the details about who deleted the VM, when and from where they were coming from on the network. If it turns out the administrator doesn't have the proper permissions to perform this operation, then the user is notified and the denial is logged and the same details about who attempted this operation are logged. Here's an example of what a Cloud Control log entry looks like compared to a typical vCenter log entry. The Cloud Control log entry provides rich metadata about what operation was performed. This basically gives you a before and after view to virtually rewind to a previous point in time. The vCenter log entry simply states that the VM underwent a reconfiguration. As a best practice, we recommend you forward Cloud Control log entries to a SIM tool or your favorite log analysis tool, such as VMware Log Insight. Beyond role-based access control, most organizations also require an efficient and flexible way to grant privileged users temporary permissions needed to perform infrequent job duties and to have greater control over the use of powerful privileges by users who need those privileges to do their daily jobs. Because the VMware platform does not provide a viable way to enable approval of a specific operation or operations attempted by a specific privileged user, organizations have turned to Cloud Control's secondary approval workflows for both vSphere and NSX operations. As mentioned previously, this feature allows authorized users to configure Cloud Control to require additional approval before privileged users can perform sensitive or disruptive operations on specific virtual objects, such as deleting or powering off a virtual machine, editing a firewall, or creating an edge services gateway. The process requires a designated group of approvers to authorize an operation attempted by a privileged user before that operation can proceed. The workflow begins when a privileged user attempts an operation requiring secondary approval per the organization's security policy. Cloud Control blocks execution and informs a privileged user that a secondary approval has been requested for the operation. Cloud Control simultaneously alerts an approval group that a request requires review and provides the details of the request. Once the approver makes the decision, Cloud Control notifies the privileged user. If the request is approved, it gives the privileged user and approver a defined window of time to execute the approved operation. If the request is denied, the user is notified of the denial. If a privileged user attempts any operation that is considered safe to perform without secondary approval, then the operation proceeds without restriction. Whew! That was a lot of content to consume in a short amount of time. I hope you're still with me. Hopefully I made the point that it's clear how multiple layers of security are better than one, and how Entrust Data Control, Key Control, and Cloud Control can provide the additional layers of security needed to protect your most sensitive data, automate the assessment, and more importantly, the remediation of your environment. Role-based access control and secondary approval workflows provide an efficient and flexible way for your virtual admins to complete their daily tasks, yet also protect users from making costly mistakes that could be detrimental to your business. Thanks for attending, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the VMUG event.